What would you tell someone that is, is Casey Peterson 12 years ago or even 24 months ago? What would you go back and say to that individual that knowing what you know now? This is a duplicatable business. This is, if you can, if you, if you spend the time and the effort and the energy and you come from a good place, this is a duplicatable business. There is not enough, to this day, yeah. there's not enough people doing it and doing, there's, let me rephrase that, there's not enough people doing it well. Yeah. There's lots of people doing it, not doing it well. And so if you can find good people and you can help motivate them, um, and, and I, I would put me in that category not very long ago. I was doing the right thing for my clients, but I wasn't doing it well. I, I think there's, there's a ton of opportunity and you can do a lot of good and you can make a lot of money and have a great lifestyle and, and be a positive impact in people's lives yeah. while being very successfully when it comes, successful when it comes to money and all the other things that come with it. Man, I'm excited for today. I got my good buddy, Mr. Casey Peterson in from Idaho. Dude, thank you for being here, man. Big Idaho in the house. Man, that's right, Idaho Falls. That's right, man, thanks you, for having me. Dude, you are, you have like a special energy about you that you, like I'm telling you guys, you get to know this cat. I'm telling you, like he, he, he just, he, from a, like a relationship standpoint, personality standpoint, you're one of the easiest person or people to like just hang out and talk to and feel like you've known you forever. I appreciate that. Yeah, you, you know, I've said this over and over again. I I really value the personal relationships. I, um, there's no detriment to that, but to, to, but I I've I've gone after those those personal relationships are big to me. I'll spend time, effort, money to to be in, in around people I like, um, and then I want to know about you. I, I'm I'm probably a little nosy. Your staff's probably like super inquisitive. Yeah, I ask a lot of questions. And, and to their credit, they've been really open with me. But yeah, I, I, I like Good. personal relationships. We ain't got nothing to hide. No? You know? No, you don't. And and I'm like, dude, uh, what you're doing is special. What you've done is special. And so I want to take a few minutes and share yeah. the the uh, impressiveness that is Casey Peterson. I mean, to, to be a business owner in Idaho doing some of the things you're doing. Um, did, you, did you dream as a kid that, you know what? Because um, you got a lot going for you, man. You know? What did I dream as a kid? I had crazy dreams. I, yeah? I love cars. So I had this ah. idea. If you've ever seen the movie Rain Man, I was going to be a, an importer, exporter of exotic cars from Italy. Oh, that's awesome. That's what I thought I was going to do as a kid. You know, and then you get yeah, a little yeah. older and you're like, all right, that's, that's probably good for the movies, not great for, for real life. And, and so um, I, I had always wanted to be work with, with good people. I, I, I gravitate to people who are much smarter than me, much better than me. Um, and, and so I love being surrounded by that. So my, my dream was always to work with good people. And so I've, I've been searching for that for years. Um, and it wasn't until I was forced to start my own insurance business that, yep. that I was able to go out and really start to, to surround myself with the people I wanted to work with. You didn't say I want to be an insurance agent at career, <laughs> career day, though. No, no, that, that no. Uh -uh. The, the, the examples I had of insurance agents were old old guys, you know, and so no, I, I didn't have an image of that at all when I was younger. You're managing, um, you, you, your specialty is Medicare. Yeah. You manage? We have uh, f four agents, three agents um, that, are, that are directly for us, and then we've got a downline of four or five. Nice. So not big. Small staff. Small. Um, but, but they're in Idaho. But, but doing, you know, um, a good amount of revenue, you're managing, uh, you guys are managing how many clients again? 2,200, somewhere okay. in there. Okay, 2,200, right? And there's, there's going to be somebody that's new is like, man, dude, I want to be Casey Peterson when I grow up, you know? Um, how, how did you get from where you were to where you are now over these, I mean, how, how long have you 12 been? years. 12 years. Has, have you seen it like ramp up over the last several or what's that, what's that dynamic of those 12 years look like? I'm laughing because you know the answer to that, but the, yeah. The, <laughs> Yeah, so, so, so the first 10 years I was independent, um, you know, I moved from, I started out as a career agent from United Healthcare um, for about four years in the Seattle market. We still have a business, a good-sized business in Washington State that we manage, but um, I was independent by myself. I didn't really get any assistance other than my wife and my family. They were awesome and lots of help, but I didn't have an assistant until a, about four or five years ago. She was really part-time, and then um, three AEPs ago I started uh, hiring her full-time during enrollment period. My wife su supplemented us the first year in our, in our new office. And then after that period of time, I recognized I need somebody full-time. And so just this last year, I brought somebody in full-time year-round. Wow. 
as an assistant. But honestly, Cody, I should have done it six, seven, eight years ago, 10 years ago. That's what I'm noticing too about individuals like you that, that they always seem to think, dude, I, it's time for me to grow. Yeah. Like I need to scale. Like I need to, and, or, or they look back and like, man, I wish I'd have done some of these things sooner. For those that haven't done some of the things that you've done, what are some of the things that you've, and, and I have you talked about it last night at, on Success Society, what are some of the things that you've done um, the last year, couple years, whatever, that you wish you would have done sooner because yeah. you've seen some of the fruit? Take the advice that you've probably heard from Cody and from others. If you, need, if you think you need an assistant, you're long past overdue of having an assistant. Mm. You should have had one a long time ago. If, if, it's, if it's crossing your mind on a regular basis, boy, I could use some help. Yep. You should have done it years ago. I wish I would have done it years and years ago. What I got advice. kept you from doing it? A fear of cost. Do I really need them? Can I keep them busy? Is you it know, like a fear of loss of, on, on spending the money? And... The money and the control. You know, I, okay. I, I, my clients, like probably most people that are going to watch this, my clients like me. They like that I answer my phone. They yeah. like that they've called me at 5 o'clock on a Saturday. If I wasn't with my family and doing something, I would take that phone call. They love that. But that meant that I was taking calls at five o'clock on a Saturday from lots of people. It's true. So I should. Do you really had... want to do that forever, though? No. Because deep down, you're the guy that wants to help. Yeah. You're a very good dude. But every business owner doesn't want to have to take the call on a fr- Saturday at five. No. Forever. No. If they don't have to, and I don't think there's anything wrong with saying that. No, there's nothing wrong because there's a solution to that. Yeah. So I've been here since sa- Sunday afternoon. It's Tuesday yep. afternoon. I- I've had a couple of calls that I had to handle. My staff, the agents in my office are handling all those things. The people yes. are getting handled. And what's great about it, anything that can wait, that's not a, an emergency, I'll call tomorrow when I'm back in the office. Exactly. So all those things that I was fearful that I would get missed by having other people fill in for me are being handled better than I was handling it. Totally. And that wasn't something that was happening a couple of years ago, right? No. Uh-uh. And you've added that in a short amount of time, and it's been, it's been cool to see where it's going and, and how you know I could see you with multiple offices and multiple yeah. states and, and a staff that's managing all of it. Dude, you want to go to, you know, Hawaii for, for, for a month? You could, right? Which that's is, the plan. That's what, I mean, that, do, do you agree with this statement? I believe every business owner gets into business, including you guys watching this, every business owner gets into business saying, b- because at some point they want to, the business to run whether they are there or not. It, it feels lazy for people to say that. But that's the real reason people become business owners, right? I, I, maybe, yes, if, they, if, if they've done it long enough. Maybe people are smarter than I am and they get, get into it thinking that. I didn't. I thought I needed to get in and I make an income. And then I started seeing people in this business making hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yes. And I'm like, I can do that. Yeah. And then once I got into it, I'm like, I can do that and I don't have to be there every day. Yeah. That's now, that's, I'm still a ways from that. I mean, I could do it now. We could, I could walk away. We could have people run it. But sure. I'm, that, I would get bored. And you would, be, you, you would have the staff and the, you know, you, you would have yeah. a good, great income. Right. You could be supported for years and years, yeah. you know. Um, but where are you wanting to go? Because we've talked about there's millions of dollars of revenue in the near future for, for, for Generations Insurance and Casey Peterson. Oh, yeah. We, we want to, well, starting in January, I thought I wanted to double my numbers and, and, and clients, but now we're, we're far going to surpass that. We're, what happened up here that, that, that you're like, okay, I just want to double, and now you're like, yeah, man, the doubling it was too small. We talk about big think, thinking big. You know, what, what happened? Cause it's, I got it in also... a room of people that are doing it. I got in a room of people that are way more than doubling it. I got in a yeah. room of people who are doing 16, have 16,000 clients. 5,000 clients, 7,000, 20. I mean, I got in a room of people that are way better than me, but I can do it. Are they actually better than you though? Well, I think they're better than me because they've got time and they've done some of the things that I haven't done yet. But I don't think it's not that I can't do it. No, no, no. And they're really not (laughs) that actually better. I don't believe that, you know? No, he's extremely humble. And, and, like my dad sit, would sit in the same seat and say the same thing, but it's not that I don't believe that they're better. It's just that yes, that they have been. They have more confidence in that. They've been. They've got more experience. They've seen it. The the staff and all the things create a lot of wins for them. You know. Well, go back to what you ask. What was the difference? The difference is is that those people took risks that I didn't take. So I was raised to believe you took very minimal risks. Mm. Like when my dad was young, he took some big risks. He opened up a store in hours away from where he was, he was living with my mom and took some big risks. But as time went on, he, he was successful in what he was doing and he kind of stayed in that, I don't want to call it a rut because my dad 
is a fantastic man and very successful business, but he stayed in that lane and he would not deviate and, and it, it did hurt him. And so I, I was raised, that's what you do. You, you don't take these risks, you go slow. And to some degree, I think there's, some, there's a time and a place for that. But yep. there's also the, the mantra that I've changed in me is that details delay. You've got to stop worrying about having everything lined out, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, before you make the next the step from A to B. Sometimes you've got to go from A to B and just trust that your instincts are going to kick in and your work ethic is going to kick in. And, and if you surround your people with yourself with enough people that are, that are on the same path with you, then it'll get there. And so That's right. now we're at a point, you asked me about how long it's been. It's only been a couple of years, but I've got the right people in place. Then I can plug in a new agent all the time. We, I plan to be in the next you know, 30 days to hire three agents. That's awesome. We will hire them at thir- three agents the next 30 days. And then after that, get them trained up and do another three and another That's three. That's huge. And it's not, now that you've done it, it feels easier to do it again, doesn't it? It does. It's yeah. exciting. It's not scary. I've gotten no butterflies. There's it's awesome. There's none. It's going to cost a lot of money. It's going to ta- right. cost a lot of effort and time. But I know now enough from getting good advice from good people and watching and asking a lot of questions that it's got to do it. That's it. That's it. What, what, you've been here a couple last two days yeah. in the office. Um, what have you noticed? What have you enjoyed? What have you liked? What have you not liked? What's the experience been for someone that eventually wants to come hang out here for a couple of days? What I've really liked is to have been involved in your meetings that start early in the morning, you know, 8 o'clock, 8.15, and go until about 9.15, 9.30. What I've really liked is I've been able to see the conversations that have happened with direction being given from you or Laurel, Lauren or, or from Andy or whoever, or, or Lana or Toby, and then listen throughout the day because I've just kind of sat back a couple times in your office and been quiet and listened, people implementing what the decision was that morning. Exactly. Or you had an idea the night before you picked me up, that afternoon you picked me up, and I'm seeing it show up on YouTube. That's right. So that's exciting. It's been really cool for that. There's nothing I haven't been liked. I'm not saying that because I'm sitting in your office here. I, there's nothing I haven't liked because I, I've been kind of been able to watch things happen without anybody knowing that I'm observing it. Yep. So I've really liked that. I've liked the team atmosphere. I love the, the morning meeting it's awesome. that you guys get in and get, get excited. You it's recognized fun, successes. You had, a, you had an, a, an agent, people might want to hear this, that it had a slump. Yes. And had reached out to you personally and texted you and said, I need some help with this slump. And you'd been communicating with him, but you took the opportunity at the morning meeting to bring it up. And in some organizations, that might not be, that'd be taboo. We don't point out the bad, but you didn't make it a bad thing. You said, okay, you're in this slump, and what are we going to do to help you? And let's get some advice. I shared some things you should say. I mean, everybody shared that day. Correct. He broke his 10-day streak of, of slump. And the and next morning, day. I bet he has a big day today. Totally. And so I loved watching that. We're going to go back, and we're going to talk about our successes, our failures, what we're working on. Yes. We're going to point out the good, the bad, the ugly. Yeah, and you got to hit that stuff head on. Like some people, like they, they avoid those not even confrontation, but just some of those negative things or like things that you're like, well, maybe we shouldn't highlight John. Well, we can highlight John in a positive way and, and help John as a group, mm-hmm. you know? I think it's because you've set up a culture though. So in, a, in another culture, talking about that agent's or that, that salesman's um, troubles would be uncomfortable and everybody in the room would be like, oh, I can't believe that the boss is pointing this out, right? Yeah. The boss is picking on him. That's not at all the feeling, the atmosphere that was in the air. It was like, all right, what are we going to do to help this guy? Yeah, and, that's cool. And it, it was really neat. <laughs> Even one of the agents said, we're, we're going to call it, you know, I'll just make up a name. Let's say this, this guy's name was John. We're going to call it, you did a John. Everybody <laughs> laughed about it. He laughed about it. But then you jumped in and said, no, we're not going to call it that. We're going to do this and, and, and put a good positive spin on it. So that was really cool. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, That's fun, that's man. Um, also, from what you've been around, mm-hmm. When you, you talked about the team and growth and all that, like wh- where did the, like what have you noticed change about you over these last couple years that, and, and, and where did that come from? And maybe what, what was going on in the past that kept you from adopting that, you money. think? Yeah? But money in the other way. Okay. So as an that. agent, you, you start to get, you know, there's agents on, on, that'll watch this that have a couple hundred clients, 500 clients, 1,000, 5,000. Yep. There's a point where you are more than covering your income or more than covering your, your costs. And I reached that pretty early in my career. You know, I remember the third year of, of AEP, I had a $70,000 paycheck from United Healthcare in January. And, and at that time, I was like, 
what am I, I'm going to take the rest of the year off. Yeah, I'm forever. Done. Yeah, I, I, baby, we hit it. We're going to go, <laughs> let's go to Mexico. And so I think that what happens is, is that then that happens multiple times and it starts happening on a consistent basis. Yes. You start having paychecks of 10 and 15 and 20 and 30, whatever the number Different is. Different levels of it. Yeah. And then you're like, I don't really need to get up. And, and get after this. It's going to come in whether I get up and go to work or not. And so for me, I became complacent. Mm. I, I had the house. I had the cars. I had the fun. I had the trips. I had a fantastic family. But that's not, that's not fulfilling for me long term. Correct. And it's not in, and knowing him, and we're a lot alike in that respect, it's not even the stuff. No. It's, it's, and it's not like, I don't love spending a lot of time with my family. It's, I'm personally fulfilled when I'm going out and chasing when I'm going out and growing, you know? And, and there's a lot of people that, that, it's cool that you're talking about this and, and honest about it and transparent about it because there's a lot of people that are really successful that go through that from mm-hmm. time to time that will, this will really resonate with them. So I had to find the next thing for me to, to get me motivated. So I went out and I'm like, I'm gonna go, this before I, we met, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna move into an office. Because I was in my home, I had no overhead. I mean, zero over. I was looking for ways to get write-offs. And so I'm like, I'm going to go op- I'm gonna go open an office. Well, then open an office wasn't enough. I'm going to go build a building. And so that's what it took. So then once I set that goal, which was a big goal, you know, million-dollar building, I'm like, all right, now i got to pay for it. How am I going to do that? And that's when I started saying, okay, I've got to find new ways to get motivated and bring more money in the door. And that's when I started, you know, I need an assistant. I need agents. I need. Yes. And when I started having those goals, I'm like, well, hold on a second. I don't know how to do any of those things. I got to get a coach. I got to get a mentor. That coach, that mentor, then said, "You got to get in the room of people who tell, who can show you how they did it. Why would you try to reinvent it? Just get in a room of people that will share with you." In our industry, I know I'm preaching the choir here. That's hard to find. Yeah. There's not a lot of people. And so once I found that tribe, if you will, to use a cheesy statement, once I found that, I'm like, "All right, let's let's go." And my pocketbook opened much easier because I had a trust going back to personal relationships with those people who are willing to give me mentorship and give me coaching and give me advice. I was going to spend the money anyway. Yeah. Why not spend it with people who are willing to be open and honest and transparent? Yep. You can either grow your business or give it to Uncle Sam. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> by the way, I do like stuff. I shouldn't make it out to like I'm this. I do right. like stuff and I, I do get motivated do. by stuff, you know, but... Um, Money, money, money ends. Money ends that drive pretty quickly. Totally, that's what happens when when, when you get it. Uh, it 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 you, you typically slow down a little, you know. Residual income is the greatest thing, and can be the greatest downfall. Mm. Once you start hitting numbers of the people that you've you've watched, and I remember sitting in a meeting one time in Seattle in a kickoff meeting that United Healthcare put on. Sorry to use. Companies, sure. in, but, but it was a great room, and we had some power guys. I mean, yeah. these guys years ago had two, three, four thousand clients, and they were, they were. I was asking them during the break what they were making, and I'm like, oh, that'll never happen to me. And then once it started Why happening, was that the first thought though? That will uh, never happen for me. I think a lot of things in the back of my mind. I think things that had happened. You know, I I had a career that I thought was gonna be for the rest of my life, and and then the mortgage. It was the mortgages, and and the the industry crashed, and so I'd spend all this time and effort and training, and and that was gone. And so I think that was in the back of my head. But once it started happening, then then I was more motivated and excited, and I wanted to grow. And then you get to a point in that residual income, you start recognizing, if I just do a good job and take care of people, I don't have to w- work really hard, yep. and that income is going to continue to come in that becomes easy to be complacent for me. For sure. Not everybody. For me, it was. Back then, what was, what was the revenue target? Like what was, uh, what was hearing them and then saying, okay, here's where I want to get to. If I was like $10,000 a month. Yeah. And a lot of people are not even there yet. I would bet, I would bet easy 80% of people that watch this aren't, definitely are not there yet. Yeah, I remember the first guy I heard made $5,000 a month. I'm like, Pff, no way. Nah, come on, you're selling Medicare to people in Seattle, Washington. You're not making $5,000 a month. And then... I got to know the guy and he's like, yeah, I am. I'm like, okay. Yeah. It's can... funny how we like, I used to tell myself that. You heard it on a video like yeah. recently, like, dude, if I can just get to five grand a month, man, I'm set forever. Oh my gosh. But it's like, dude, once, or, or I actually, it's five grand a week is what I was saying. Right. And even then I was wrong. It's funny how that's the, that's you and the mind growing over time thinking like, okay, man, if I can just get to this and you get there and you're like, I just didn't know enough. You know, didn't and I didn't do. I, I wasn't. I wasn't doing enough. I didn't know enough, and I wasn't doing enough. Mm. I thought I was. I was. I mean, during AEP, I was working. My wife will test this. Fourteen hours a day, six days a week. You know, and and I was doing enough, but not enough of the right things. I didn't know enough. Yeah. I, I I could have 
yeah, I was talking to Andy earlier today. If, if I could go back in time and, and knowing now what I know then, I would have had five agents. What would you tell someone that is, is Casey Peterson 12 years ago or even 24 months ago? What would you go back and say to that individual that knowing what you know now? This is a duplicatable business. This is, if you can, if you, if you spend the time and the effort and the energy and, and you come from a good place, this is a duplicatable business. There is not enough, to this day, yep. there's not enough people doing it and doing, there's, let me rephrase that, there's not enough people doing it well. Yeah. There's lots of people doing it, not doing it well. And so if you can find good people and you can help motivate them, um, and, and I, I would put me in that category not very long ago. I was doing the right thing for my clients, but I wasn't doing it well. I, I think there's, there's a ton of opportunity and you can do a lot of good and you can make a lot of money and have a great lifestyle and, and be a positive impact in people's lives yeah. while being very successfully when it come, successful when it comes to money and all the other things that come with it. So uh, if I was to go back 24 months, I would absolutely say, um, we were on the call last night, if you think you need an assistant, you're past the point of needing assistance. True. If you think you can bring in another agent or two, you're past the point of needing of being able to do it. it. It do it. What about the investment piece, the money piece, the market? You know, I mean, the 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 investment in the business, the marketing, the branding, all that kind of stuff. You talked a lot about that last night too. Yeah, the, there the, there's a way to spend money smartly, and there's a way to spend money, you know, pretty dumb. Yeah. And I was spending money pretty dumb, two ways. One, I wasn't spending enough. And that, that's, again, a limiting belief that I, I was scared to death to spend the kind of money that I'm spending today. Yeah. But what's funny is I was more scared spending a little bit of money than I am today spending, as you know, a lot, a lot more money in advertising. Why is that? Because once I did it, once I made that first step and gave it some time and, and was reasonable in my expectation. Yeah. You have to be reasonable that it, not everything's going to work today. It's not going to work today and perfectly. Yeah. Right. So once I did it and I gave it the time that it was, was reasonable to give it and altered a few things and changed some things and start to seeing it work, it comes to a point where if I can spend a dollar to make two or three or four, great. Now times that by 20 or 30 or 50 or a thousand. As long as I have that number coming back to me two or three times, I'm okay with it. Yep. And, and so the fear is gone because I've seen that work mm. where I spend the dollars, big, small, little, whatever it looks like, and it comes back to me. Yes. You guys need to take that, take the step. Okay. It, it's all the, the toughest, the person we need to believe in the most is us. Mm -hmm. The person we struggle to believe the most in at times is us. You know, it's that internal game that the battle and the, cause even, even you said earlier, you're with the bunch of the UHC guys at a meeting and you're like, man, <laughs> I could never do that. Right. That is doubt creeping in, but that's the a lot of the times that's the first thing we think. Yeah. You know, I, I do it all the time. I'm walking out to a conference and I'm, I'm I'm like, man, I don't know if I can do that as good as that person just did. And then I'm like, no, no, no. Hang on a second. You can do better. And and quit worrying about doing it perfectly. Yes. I, I'm gonna fail when I walk out this door tomorrow back in my office. I'm gonna make mistakes. That's so good. By every the way. single day. But quit worrying about it. Perfect is impossible. No, and, and by the way, I, I, let me go back. It, it's no different than you saying in some, of your, in some of your videos, I need to get through how many no's, right? So just get me enough no's and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get my goal. Same thing with make mistakes. I just need to make enough mistakes that I'm going to get to the point where I'm making the right decisions and I'm going to figure out what's right and wrong. Yes. But I'm going to make mistakes all along the way. I, I'm trying, I'm not there yet, yeah. to almost look to make mistakes. I, let me see what I can do wrong to figure yes. out what I got to do right. I love that. You're, you're in a place too where I can see from a finance, from a, from a business career standpoint, is this the happiest you've ever been in your career? Yeah, it is absolutely the happiest. Yeah. It's such a cool feeling. It is, it is fun. It's fun because I'm excited to go back and I've got some really great guys that, and gals that work with me, but I'm excited to go back and find more people to bring in the team yes. and see them grow. I mean, that, that agent that I brought in, I don't, we didn't talk about it uh, about a year ago, to see him do so well yep. is, is just the funnest thing. Dude, so Way cool. funner than anything I've bought recently. Why is it that, that, that the people aspect, like helping others and bringing others up and seeing them win, we end up getting more gratification out of that than seeing ourselves win. Because I got excited. He brought his wife, and I know his wife and his and his, yeah. and his children, his two daughters. And 
and they're amazing people and they've bought a brand new house and they're, they That's feel comfortable awesome. enough to buy a house with the opportunity that him and I and the other team members are, are developing. And that's really fun to watch. Mm. I mean, it's fun to have my own home. It's fun to us to go yeah. on trips and I'm going to keep doing that. But to see him feel comfortable enough to take those kind of risks and do those kind of things and grow his family is just... I think you see that. I think you feel and see that you're really winning and succeeding when you see you helping others win and succeed too yeah. versus it just being about us. Like, like it's easy. I almost think too, like if, if someone has the ability to be Casey Peterson with people and freaking blow up their business and start to think on a different level and help people that they're selfish if they don't. That's, I, I that's weird agree. though. I couldn't agree more. Okay. No, I, it is weird. Okay, so tomorrow you walk out the door and you shut this all down and you just go out and be Cody Askins by yourself. Is that selfish? Yeah. Y- yes, 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 it yes, is, it is, is the answer. Yes, it is. That, that's the answer. That's a good analogy. But that's the answer because how many people now have to go out and figure out that's right. On their own. That's not ego. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think that's pride at all. I don't, yeah, I don't think it is either. That's a really good point. What do you guys agree? I want to hear in comments below because that, that's, that's, that was brilliant. It's fun. And, and, he say, and he says people are smarter than him. No. Dude, he's got his IQ probably puts me to shame, guaranteed. Okay. How, how, why are the people aspects so important to, to growth? Not from the satisfaction, winning, success standpoint, but from the... Um, internal engine like you've seen uh, uh, the, the 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 best thing that i've personally ever done is surround myself with incredible freaking people and man i am so grateful and so blessed to have unbelievable people yeah the, it's it's neat i've got another guy that's only been a couple of months in our office and um he is driven i mean this guy's got vision boards and he's got ideas and he's got goals and he is a driven guy and he is the, you asked why the people thing is so important because he's like 24 i'm 47 mm. i i learn from him all the time i'm excited about what he has to share and so the people aspect is great because you get to learn and grow and be better because of these other people around you yes. my admin she's got some huge goals in her life and she, I'm watching her do it every day. She wants to be healthier. I watch what she brings to eat. I watch what she brings to lunch. I, she talks about what they did over the weekend and, and some of the big goals that she has. And so uh, to, to be involved in, in some of those things and the other five stories I could tell you is really exciting because it takes you out of you. I get in my head a lot because I have all these decisions to make. I have yep. all these things that I want to do. And so I start you know, putting my head down and going to work. And when I take a step back and start paying attention to what these other people are doing around me, it, it, it puts my head in the better place. It makes you better too with people watching. Yes. It's like you're always <laughs> playing a game, a, a basketball game with people in the stands. Yeah. Or with teammates. So I learned something about that. I used to, years ago in another career, I, I always had my door shut. Mm. And until people came in to meet with me, I had my door shut. So in this career, my door doesn't get shut unless it's a client meeting. No. So they can hear me on the phone. They can hear me in my interaction. My kids call, they hear me. Sometimes my kids do things and they upset me and I have to remember, not only are they listening, but I should be doing the right thing in how I interact with my kids and other and vendors. I love and that. Like I wanted to blow up at a vendor the other day. Like lose it on this vendor. They completely botched a huge project. All right, stop. What would you do? Now let's see what Casey did. Well, <laughs> what I would normally do with my door shut is I'd, I'd come unhinged. Yeah. But I'm, it, it, because my door was open, I had to take a beat. And because I took a beat, I was able to put it in perspective and say, what am I going to do about Mm. this? Losing my mind on this person who I have a long-term relationship with who's going to help me in the future is going to damage that person relationship. So I was able to take a beat and say, okay, how are you going to fix this? Where I would have said, you will fix this and hung up on it. Mm. But because I said, okay, how are you going to fix this? I was able to have it put it back in their court. And so the door being open, them hearing how I interact made me a better person because I was worried about my personal relationship with my admin and with my my guys in the office hearing me be a jackass, excuse yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. That takes a special maturity. <laughs> or have been a jackass a lot of times. <laughs> <laughs> I can relate. <laughs> yeah, and didn't want to be that guy again. <laughs> <laughs> never again. <laughs> Hopefully never again. What's, uh, what's next? Like, wh- where do you see this thing going now? We're going to have multiple offices. We're going to have multiple offices with multiple uh, agents working for Generations Insurance, working within Generations Insurance, M- multiple managers, multiple team leads. Yeah, we're going to... How big could this thing get? Yeah, we could, be, we could go out of state if I wanted to, go to multiple states. Yeah. 
Could it yeah. be country across the whole country? It could. Yeah. What 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 what's like probably the only thing that could hold all that back? By the way, <laughs> how much time I want to put in? How much time I have? How much time I want to spend? So, to me, you. No, that's it. I, yeah. I I am the limiting factor. Absolutely, it's not a lack of resources. Not a lack of good quality people out there. It's not a lack of product. It's not a lack of technology. It's not a lack mm-hmm. of any of those things. It's what do I, how do how much do I want to limit it? Mm. That's mm. it. That's so good. If you had to do it all over again, how fast could you get where you're at? <laughs> yeah, fast. Fa- not fast, and I don't want to say that sounding like I'm bragging. Fast. I mean, As in, two years. Two years. You could get to 2,200 clients. He's right, by the way. Probably less, don't you think? Uh, yeah, probably less. Knowing what you know now, with a little aggressiveness, yeah. with some money. Yeah. Also, it's easier too. You guys hear that, and it's not ego. It's saying, okay, I've learned a lot. He has the ability to take the, some mass. He would take some huge risks, mm-hmm. and he is right now. What? Why? Because he, he, if he had to do it over again, he would take the risk because he believes in himself and he knows it's going to work out. Like once you know your, your the risks are going to work out, you take them. <laughs> you, you, because I'm you, trying to take more. Right? Isn't that funny though? Yeah. I'm like looking for risks. <laughs> what would the five year ago Co- Cody say to you taking more risks? He like, like I don't one step at a time. Yeah. Slow down. Slow down. What are you doing, buddy? You don't want to go bankrupt, okay? Right. Yeah. You don't want to have a, a a horror story to tell down the road. You know what would your what what, what would your you know family do? Your peers, like, peers, friends. Like, yeah, I mean, it's like, dude. Now I'm like, what am I gonna be proud of in ten years? That's what I ask myself all the time. Is it money? No. It's not. No, because one of my goals is to have a hundred million dollars in revenue. It's not gonna like sat. It's not the money's not gonna like be the satisfier. It's the ten thousand agents at the conference. It's unbelievable ra- relationships like this. It's a thousand people on the team. It's a four story, five story glass building in Springfield, Missouri. It's a helicopter, helicopter pad on the top. Helicopter pad on the top. We just decided that last night. Last night. I get Details the first delay. ride. You get, <laughs> I get the first Casey ride. Gets the first ride. Yeah, dude. Do, do you? Could you see that in 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 our future? Oh yeah. I yeah. could too now, by the way. Yeah, because it, th- again, how many mistakes have I made to this point? So I know what not to do, and I'm still going to make yes. mistakes, but I know what to do. Right. A- and because I've I've done all, I've made lots and lots of mistakes. That it becomes narrower, narrower, narrower. Mm. You, you think about massive corporations, the biggest in the world. You look at you look at Amazon. Their growth in the first how many years was was good, but wasn't rocket ship. Right. And I have to believe, I don't know the answers. I have to believe there was a point where they're like, we've got this figured out. Yes. And now we're going to do this. And now we're going to do it. And it used to be just books, right? Yeah. How crazy is that? Right. Now we're going to have grocery stores. And now we're going to have health care. And I mean, they start, because they figured out how to get there. They've, know, yep. they've done all the mistake making they're going to make to slow them down. You can implement it. So right. we can implement those things because we figured out the vehicle and it's running. Correct. They're going to have the whole monopoly board owned instead of just a corner. We're not going to just focus on insurance. So we've added extra products that I would have never have thought about adding two years ago. And we'll add more mm. because it's we can plug it into the system that's, that's working. That's so good. That's so good. What are some tips that you would give someone out there that is new and struggling that um, they need some help? They need some direction. You know, I, we get comments a lot that are like, man, I... I was about to quit yeah. and then I found this video, you know? And yeah, there's some other comments, obviously, <laughs> when you get to this size of channel, I guess. But in the grand scheme of things, the channel's even still small, really. But that's what's cool um, is seeing those comments. So keep leaving them if you are. Um, no matter what comment you leave, it helps us because it's engagement. However, I love, the, I love the special ones like that. So what would you say to somebody out there that's like, dude, my back's against the wall. I don't have a lot of money. And I'm yeah. really struggling. I'm thinking about quitting. So the, two things. First of all, so is every single other person who's at whatever level you think is good. Yeah. I, I can. I quit probably 50 times in the first two years. Mm. I, I quit over and over again. I told my wife, this is ridiculous. This is going to work. I'm tired of going to people's homes and fighting for couch space with their cats. Yeah. I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> you know, this is ridiculous. People standing me up. 22 People, cats. Yeah. 20, I had, 22 cat lady we had to call in <laughs> the state on yeah there there's there's all those things if you if you look at whoever it is a cody or or, a, or some of the other 
huge guys in the industry, they quit. I promise you. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. if they tell you they, by the way, if you run into somebody who says they never quit, they're lying. Or they at least considered it. When I say a quit, lot. Be, but I want to be clear. When I say quit, I quit for the moment. Correct. Uh, this is it. I'm done. And then I went and I walked away, or I did whatever. I'm like, okay, I'm not yep. gonna quit. Obviously, I didn't quit. Really. Yep. That's okay. The difference is, is that I think you have to decide you're gonna do, you're gonna go forward with whatever's ethical, and you're gonna do whatever it takes. Yep. We were talking. There was uh, on a, on the ride to lunch the other day. I, I sold cars for while I was in college. I hated sitting around waiting. I hated it. So. That I was waiting for people to show up on the dealership lot for me to sell them something. After a few weeks of that, I was going nuts. So I picked up the newspaper. I started calling people who had ads in the newspaper who were selling their cars to have them come give us, let us give them a bid. They were selling a car. That may mean that they need another car. I was willing Brilliant. to do what it took. Now, that wasn't highly successful. <laughs> it wasn't? No. Traffic, maybe. Tra- lots of traffic. But then my, you know, my sales manager like, quit having people come in with like 1992 You're Suburbans. Room. Yeah, we don't want those anymore. But... My point was is that do what it takes to get it done. And so if you're asking if what I would do if I could go back and tell Casey Peterson 12 years ago, mm-hmm. put the time in. It's going to get there. Quit expecting it to be tomorrow. Um, I have agents that had to work a part-time job to have money come in because they're straight commission. Yeah. And for a period of time, that was okay. I think a lot of people expect that it has to look a certain way. That's right. And, and it doesn't. If you have the money and the resources to put everything in this, then do it. Yes. They won't but regret it, will they? They will not regret it. If you don't quit, you can't fail. That's exactly right. But man, we always want to quit. We do. Like our sales team will have a bad day and I'll be like, dude, I want to implode the whole team. I want to fire everybody. And the next day it'll be unbelievable. And I'm like, man, we're the greatest sales team on the planet. Mm-hmm. Like everyone goes, I go through that. Casey goes through that. We mm-hmm. all go through that from day to day where it's like, man, today I'm like, I don't know, you know. But then wake up, next day. It's a new day. It's a new day. It's a new day. And it's an exciting day. And that's the greatest thing about what we do for a living. If, if you're selling good products, you can't hurt people. Yeah. If I have somebody pick between a Medicare Advantage or a Medicare Supplement. They're both helping them. They're in both some helping way. them, right? That's right. It's a win. Better than nothing. Yeah. So what am I, what's my real concern? My concern is, is if I'm going to give enough people, if I'm going to get in front of enough people to give them that option. So if yes. I can figure out how to get in front of enough people to give them that option, I'm that's winning. Right. And so when I get nervous or I get scared or I'm spending some money that I would not normally spend, hmm. I have to remember what's the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is to get in front of enough people to give them that yes, option. That's right. That's it. And you get less scared. How did you become so impressive? <laughs> well, I'm not, I appreciate that, but I'm not. But I, I think I've just, anybody that you know that knows me well knows I made a lot of mistakes. A, a lot of mistakes. My wife will watch this at some point and she'll be in the background saying, yes, he has. <laughs> well, what, what do you think about the, the quote, uh, the key to success is failure? A hundred percent agree with it. Yeah, I have two we tattoos. We don't like doing it. One says details delay right here and the other one says key to success is failure. I don't have tattoos. <laughs> I don't either. But you do, uh, the, the details delay thing, let's talk about that real quick for a couple minutes because that, I, I spoke at 1% Mastermind. You should have trademarked it because I'm telling Scott people Stale. it was my idea. Look into trademarking that. Uh, you... That stood out. Like you wrote that down and you've been talking about it ever since for 90 days later, almost. All the time. I'm getting a plaque. I'm not joking. I'm getting a plaque mate. It's going to go by my door in my office. Gosh, I love that. Be- I'll tell I you why. To, I, need to, I need to write a book about that. You, you, I'll tell you why. Because it was, it was perfect timing, perfect place, perfect history, perfect experiences for me. Yes. It, and, and you won't remember this because there was enough people in the room. But when you said it, you happened to be looking at me. <laughs> I, it, and, and I don't remember that. Yeah, you happened to be looking at me. And, I, and you weren't saying it for me, but you happened to be looking at me. And so it was almost like one of those, you know, kind of moments. It was, and, and I needed to hear that. And so I went into this 1% mastermind with some goals. And, and I didn't know what I wanted to hear, but I knew I needed to hear something. And that, yep. that was it. That's but again, cool. if I hadn't have put myself in that room, paid to get there, paid to entry, yes. right? And been open-minded... I wouldn't. I don't know where I'd be right now. A lot of it's timing, like you said, man. Mm-hmm. There's been stuff happening over the last several years, but it's like, dude, I, I've heard it before, but man, this time I really heard it. Yeah. Like I really got it, and you're right. You had to show up. That's the that's most most people struggle to like show up. When you were selling cars, you thought outside the box. You were creative. Like mm-hmm. you went for it. Um, but think of who was in that so room good. too. 
and, and you put yourself in a room of people who are, are giving and personal relationships matter. Yes. And I, I hope it's okay, but totally. Tyler Reese doesn't have to be there. Right? I mean, no, totally. Tyler Reese doesn't have to be anywhere. He can do whatever he wants 100%. and sit in his house and answer phone calls. But he was in front of the room sharing things. Yeah, it was cool. That was just unbelievable. I mean, and, and to, for a guy like me to learn from a guy like that is... That's what we're trying to do, right? Yeah. Building, getting success people in a room together so they can learn from one another. And for me to ever think at any point, like... Casey's just there to learn from me, it, it, it would be the wrong thinking because you'll always learn more from the rest of the amazing people than you will from me. Sure, you may learn stuff from me, but it's hard for me to outweigh the other 48 in the room that you're gonna learn from. That's just, it's just not like, and, and the moment, we started realizing that um, the last few years, and it's our goal and duty and obligation to get serious winners and power players together to learn from one another. But you've also picked people who will be open and transparent. Yes. Because you could pick some pretty big egos. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh you, could, you could attract some pretty big egos who would just get up there and be all about them. It'd be the them show. Yeah. The people that you have in front of the room and the people that I've, I've interacted, that they got eg- egos, don't get me wrong. We all sure, do. Sure, sure. But they're open and transparent and friendly. and, and uh, I get along with those, those that, that were willing to share because that's just what I enjoy doing too. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, what would you like to leave with, man? How, how cool! This has been a blast. You've been un- un- unbelievable. Has he done incredible, or has he done uh, incredible? I appreciate that. I'll tell you one thing. I did want to say with after I left one percent, I went back to my area, my little area, and I've been reaching out to agents that are my competitors, and awesome. and we've been talking. And what I've found is that the ones that are open and transparent and, and like the personal relationships, I've been able to learn from them. And now mm. they're in my and they're in my market, so they I've gleaned information from them. They've gleaned, I hope, something from totally me. Totally, they have. But now we have a, a more, we're, we're, I'm working on getting a commu- community of them to talk and, and, and give advice, and they've given me advice, and I've learned. And so That's awesome. I've tried to take that back to where I live. That's awesome. And I think it just helps us all. And don't get me wrong, he still wants to dominate. Oh, yeah. However, yeah. I like that you've done that. That's really cool. Yeah, we That's want really to crush good. him. That's right. Right. But we'll help him along the way. There you go. I'm just That's kidding. That's right. That's right. That's yeah. good, man. Dude, thank you very much. Okay. Thanks, Cody. I've enjoyed you. You too. I've enjoyed getting you, you get a chance to share your story, everything you're doing. You've been really, really special. Um, keep following this dude, okay? He's doing something special. He's building something. He's just like you. And one day, you're going to be Casey Peterson too. <laughs> hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're going to love. It's right there. Click on it. See you in there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm extremely excited to jump out and interview an absolute powerhouse in the insurance industry, Miss Leslie Schofield. What's up, Leslie? Hey, hey, hey. Happy to be here. Thank you so much for being a part of this. All right. She, 